Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on light and color. The topic of this video is thin film interference, and we want to know how can a wave model of light be used to explain the iridescent colors that are observed in a soap or oil film. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I discussed the interference of waves. An understanding of wave interference will be essential in understanding the topic of this video. So I've left a link to this video in the description section if you need to review it. Interference occurs whenever two waves meet up while traveling through the same medium. There are two types of interference, constructive and destructive interference. Constructive interference occurs at any location where an upward displaced wave meets up with a second upward displaced wave. At that location, the resulting displacement of the medium will be greater than the displacement of the individual waves. Constructive interference can also occur when a downward displaced wave meets up with a second downward displaced wave. Destructive interference occurs in any location where an upward displaced wave meets up with a downward displaced wave. At that location, the resulting displacement of the medium will be less than the individual displacements of the two interfering waves. The short-lived streaks of color seen in a soap or oil film are the result of interference. It can only be explained with a wave model of light. These iridescent colors are the result of what we call in physics thin film interference. As visible light with wavelengths associated with the colors Roy G. Bibb strike the top surface of the film, a portion of the light energy is reflected off that top surface and becomes wave one. But a portion of the energy refracts across the boundary, reaches the bottom surface of the film, reflects off the bottom surface, and refracts back out into the air, forming wave 2. Under certain conditions, which we will talk about, and for a specific wavelength, wave 1 and 2 will undergo constructive interference. This intensifies the brightness of the color that's associated with that wavelength, allowing us to see one color when we look at that specific location on the film. Waves 1 and 2 will constructively interfere as long as two conditions are met. The first is that wave 1 and wave 2 must be relatively close to one another so that their crests and their troughs are meeting up with each other. The second condition is that wave 1 and wave 2 must be in phase. By saying that, I mean that the crests of wave 1 are aligned with the crests of wave 2 and the troughs of wave 1 are aligned with the troughs of wave 2. Condition 1 is met as long as the light that is approaching the top surface of the film is approaching perpendicular to the film surface. Now, I've not shown that in my diagrams because if I did, all the waves would be on top of one another and we wouldn't be able to distinguish between any of the waves. The second condition is met only for certain wavelengths of light from amongst the wavelengths that approach the top surface. As we will see, the wavelength and therefore the color that is reinforced by constructive interference is dependent upon the thickness of the film. So let's discuss this condition 2 in a little bit more detail. I can say that wave 2 will exit the film and be in phase with wave 1 as long as the extra distance traveled by wave 2 is equal to a whole number of wavelengths. I can express this statement as an if-then statement by saying if the extra distance traveled by wave 2, sometimes called the path difference, is equal to one wavelength, or two wavelengths, or three wavelengths, etc., then the crest of wave 2 will be aligned with the crest of wave 1, and constructive interference will occur, intensifying the specific color associated with that wavelength. Now I have to discuss a nuance here. You'll notice the, the disclaimers all over the screen. And the nuance is that we understand that any wave, like a light wave, can undergo inversion or a phase shift when reflecting off a material that's more dense than the material that it's in. In other words, wave one would, could undergo a phase shift or inversion, turning its crest into a trough and wave two upon reflection off the bottom of the film could also undergo an inversion or phase shift turning its crest into a trough. 
And to really get the mathematics right, I have to consider whether wave 1 or wave 2 or both wave 1 and 2 or neither wave 1 or 2 undergo this phase shift. And, and, and if depending on the situation, I might have to turn my whole numbers here of 1, 2, and 3 into half numbers. But I, I don't want to consider that nuance here because I don't want to muddy the water. I'm only trying to show how a thickness of a film is associated with a wavelength and therefore a color that gets reinforced. For us. So let's consider our logic beginning again with that statement that if the extra distance traveled by wave 2 is equal to a whole number of wavelengths, constructive interference occurs. So let's ask the question what's the extra distance traveled by wave 2? Well, wave 2 enters the film and travels down through the film and back up through the film. So the extra distance it travels is equal to twice the thickness of the film. So once more, I'm going to state this as an if-then statement. If 2 times the thickness of the film is equal to n times the wavelength of the light in the film, where n is some whole number, then we would observe constructive interference occurring for that particular wavelength, and therefore its color, and that color would be reinforced and intensified and be the color we would see at that particular location in the film. Now let's put this all together to explain the iridescent colors that we see in an oil or soap film. And let's begin with the assertion that an oil or soap film has a varying thickness. It's not a uniform thickness at all locations at all moments in time since oil and soap films are fluids and they flow due to forces resulting from uh, winds and other other forces. So here we see a diagram of a film of varying thickness and what we can assert is that because of the different thickness at different locations, different wavelengths and therefore colors will be seen at the different locations. So for example, Roy G. Biv strikes the top surface of the film. Each color is associated with a different wavelength, with the red colors being the longer wavelength waves and the violets being the shorter wavelengths, shorter wavelength colors. So at the thicker locations for, a, say, an n value of 1, we would observe the reds being reinforced and constructively interfering and intensified in brightness. So you'll notice that's true for waves 3 and 4. But at the thinner locations, like those for waves 5 and 6, we would see the violets being reinforced, and those colors would be, would be appearing at that specific location. And for the intermediate locations between where the reds and the violets are being reinforced, we would see OIG B being reinforced. So we see for waves 1 and 2 and 7 and 8, we see greens and blues being reinforced at those specific colors. It's all thickness dependent and wavelength dependent. And so while Roy G. Biv strikes the surface at given thicknesses and therefore given locations, a specific wavelength and color is seen at that specific location. Interference phenomenon are wave phenomenon, and the streaks of color that you see in an oil film or soap film are evidence that light is behaving in a wave-like manner. While the mathematics of thin films can be quite complicated and admittedly simplified in this presentation, the point to be driven home is that light behaves in a wave-like manner, and only a wave model of light can explain the iridescent colors that we see in a soap or oil film. So the next time you see these beautiful colors, think physics and think light waves. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here's a page from our website, and I've left a link to it in the description section. It's a tutorial page that discusses thin films in more detail. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.